Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Good evening, one and all. Yes, you may have seen a change in location. This is not Middle Earth. I'm in Royal Town. Yes, the Royal Town of Sutton Coldfield, nonetheless. Yeah, cop a load of this. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Do you like the black background? I feel like one of those Marceau Marceau puppets where these hands sort of just float in. I think it's really good. I hope you're all safe and well wherever you are in the world. Tonight, we've got an absolute action-packed live show with some of the top masters runners from around the world and some novices, beginners like me as well. So yes, I know I'd still regard myself whilst I've only been running five years, novice, beginner, but we're going to talk about longevity. How do you keep running through the years? And as I said, I've got some amazing athletes who've been running from when they were little and they're still running. It's just by chance that all four of us are in the V55 category, but don't let that put you off. Whether you're 35 and beyond or whatever age you are, this is for everybody because it's still Saturday night, isn't it, Elton? <laughs> Oh, yes, it is. And there's already people coming on live. So hello, Steve. How are you doing, matey? And I can see that Gary has joined in as well. Gary, good evening to you. Yes, go, go, go. So for those of you all watching, do give this a thumbs up. Um, a warm welcome, Gary and Steve and everybody else who's watching. I know there's quite a few on here. So yes, do give this a thumbs up if you're watching it on the old YouTubes and feel free to uh, share. And uh, I know the pick keeps breaking up or whatever. Hopefully you can hear me. This is the joys of being in a royal borough. I can see there's people already on Facebook watching this as well, giving it thumbs up. And there's already, we're in the double figures, massive figures. This is fantastic. So without further ado, I've got guests from around the world again last year. You may have seen that I had guests from, hey, Paul, good evening to you, Paul. Fantastic. Another brilliant master's runner. So we may bring you in, Paul, on some of the questions. This is a Q&A live. We are live here. As I said, I'm here in my royal town of Sutton Coalfield. And uh, I did mention that you can get in touch with me. If you want to get involved in the show in some way, you can contact me on the socials at Poet With Pace. And you can also email me at poetwithpace at gmail.com. So in terms of what we're doing it is Saturday. I've got, uh, you know, in the previous weeks, we've had royalty all types of world. We had Colin Johnson on, who's the royal, basically the male royalty of 100 Club. Uh, we also had Denise Soriol on last week, who's done hundreds, literally hundreds of marathons and uh, double digits in Masters. But tonight we've got uh, a Yorkshireman. We have a man from the English Riviera. <laughs> I try and get me, try and get my voice right, get my teeth in correctly, and also we have an amazing lady from the state of New York, New York. That's right, folks. She's one of the top subscribers. She's an amazing athlete at the peak of her game. Wins races, does all sorts. Been running for many years. So. Bring it on board from Orange County, New York, Greenwood Lake, New York, to be more specific. Here's Suzanne. Hey, hello, Suzanne, Paul. welcome to the show. Hello, hello. Hello, hello everyone. Say, hello, hello, Britain. My Siri just went off then, you know, so I better switch this uh, phone off. It is, do you want to show everybody what it looks like where you are? Look at that snow. So it's a bit nippy. Here in Britain, we had double digits, pretty warm. So, and when we were doing a chat earlier in the week, Suzanne, there was some deer in your garden, wasn't there? Um, in my backyard. In your backyard. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. fantastic to have you on the show. 
B55, we're going to bring on all the other guests and then we'll start our chat. And I did say, um, whilst I haven't got the exact tunes for these guys, is that uh, I can throw in <laughs> some, uh, because basically, you know, I do feel that we're going to talk about the love of running and often, you know, people get a bit romantic. So there's all sorts of people coming on. Do give it a thumbs up. Suzanne is our first guest, as I say, from Greenwood Lake, New York. So we're going to share the love of our running, the passion of running, just like Rene and Renato. <laughs> The sermon, as yes, so as uh, from the English Riviera, nonetheless. Yeah, baby, yeah. Here's Lawrence. Hey, Lawrence, welcome. <laughs> hi, hi, guys. Hi, Lawrence. It's hey, uh, yes, yeah, a little bit, a little bit warmer here than uh, <laughs> in New York. Oh, so I thought I'd have the chalk and cheese of the weather extreme. So it's sub zero in Greenwood Lake, New York, and it's plus fourteen <laughs> on the English Riviera. But you know, yeah. snow, snow and fire. What a great mix, eh? But um, let's bring on our other guests. You are look, you're looking very well there, Lawrence. I've got to say. Thank feeling you. Thank good? you. I'm feeling, feeling good. good. Yeah, no, it's been a good day. Yes. So I'm going to bring on a very proud Yorkshireman whilst he's living in London. He's uh, Once you hear him talking, I know there's a lot of Yorkshiremen who are live on right now. I can see there's all sorts of guests and uh, yes, special guests. I don't know why uh, Ben's disappointed because they are special guests. Yeah, they are, Everybody's special. Come on, Ben. There we go, Ben. Guess, special yes, in that's their right. Own yes, everybody's special. And, and uh, good evening to you, uh, Tom. Yes, welcome, welcome. So, uh, yes, everybody's special. So I'm going to bring on another special guest because, um, yeah, so he, here yeah, he baby, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. He's a very proud Yorkshireman. This man is going for a 4 minute 30 at age 55. It's no less than Neil Danby. Good evening, Neil. How are you? I'm fine. Good. 4.20, not 4.30. 4.20. Whoa. 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 Well that, that's that bold. That's very bold. I need to get 4.16 is what I'm going for, the actual time. 4.16. Now, is there anyone watching yes. live who would like to run a 4.16? Um, <laughs> oh, yes, Quest. <laughs> Mild. Sorry, no. <laughs> guys, I, my, my typo, yes, I did spot the deliberate spelling mistake, which no, Ben did spot. I said special quests. Uh, so Ben has picked it up. Yes, so congratulations, Ben, on spotting the typo. Um, <laughs> and uh, following on with the, as I'm in the royal town of um, Sutton Coalfield, I've got to remember where I am right now. I've been moving about here, there, everywhere. But uh, yes, Ben. I thought you'd be going to Mordor or something. But this is better than Mordor, isn't it? We've got... So, Neil, where are you right now? I'm, I'm as far away from the children as I could possibly be in my house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's just south of London, a, a place called Oxted, which is on the North Downs. It's a great place for training, lots of forest trails, hills as well. Uh, and great roads and the running track four minutes walk yeah. from the doorstep yeah. i've got to say to all three of you a big big thank you um for coming on it's just ironic that we're all in the v55 category whilst i appreciate i know suzanne you said oh i'm nearly yes i am nearly 60 but give me a few months so i'm still in the v55 category and uh, lawrence you're newly into the v55 as well as yourself neil but all different backgrounds do you want to give a quick little um 60 seconds because i know i'm going to be doing separate in detail interviews so those who are watching who want to know more about suzanne want to know more about neil and more about lawrence we'll be doing separate interviews because we could talk on all the topics that these guys because they're all very experienced um, people i mean well <laughs> yeah excellently experienced and um, even uh, my friend lawrence ran his first marathon as a sub four which i know a lot of people watching dreaming of running sub four so we tend to know what we're doing but these guys have been running for many years and we could talk for all hours. So we're going to go into details of separate interviews, but this one's more of a generic Q&A of how we keep longevity. And another top master's guy who's come in and who's online, Paul Coughlin, who's in the V50 category, if I'm correct, Paul. And uh, 
is uh, Paul's commented, and obviously this is to you, Neil, he'd be jumping through hoops if he could run a 440, let alone a 420. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing the different levels. And I'm sure Suzanne and Lawrence, we, we'd all love to run a sub five minute mile, wouldn't we? Um, that would oh, yeah. be something, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah, that's past my time now. So the topics that we're going to but be we going are, through... But we are talking 1,500 metres, not the mile. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is, what, 100 metres short, isn't it? Yeah. 106. 106. 106. Yeah. 106. So 160 counting. <laughs> no. It's still super fast. It's very super fast. Yeah. So the topics we're going to be going through, there's, there's a whole mix of things, and I know that... Um, People from different backgrounds ask for the summaries, but what we're going to be going through is things like, you know, in terms of helping us through longevity of running, things like injury prevention, body maintenance, um, things like how do we keep it fresh in our latter years, you know, new challenges, um, dealing with burnout, finding your running passion. Those are the kind of topics, but also some specifics, but in no particular order. Um, but we'll go ladies first. If you want to, and you can all prepare a quick sort of 60 second, your running history and yeah, over to you, Suzanne in Greenwood Lake, New York first. Ladies first. Oh, boy. Where do I start? 12 years old. Track. Yep. Hurdles. 100-yard wow. dash. 220-yard. 4x4 four four relay. Wow. That's so you were track. Again. That's 12, where all as, as a 12-year-old, you were track runner. Junior right? high school. Junior high school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was a sprinter. Yeah. And then got talked into cross country senior year high school. Right. And then started road race back in the tail end of the what they called the running boom here mm -hmm. with Frank Shorter and Bill Rogers. What year uh, was that? Oh, it, it, that the boom started in, I'm going to say mid 70s. Yeah. When I was in junior high school. So, mm -hmm. uh, my first road race was 1979. Wow. Yeah. And what distance was that, Suzanne? A 10K. 10K. Just jump right in. Skip the 5K, go right to the 10K. <laughs> no <laughs> messing. And obviously you have ran marathons as well. You did go up to marathons and now you're going back I to did. the shorter distances. Yep. Yeah. I capped marathon at 10. I and did 10. I included um, the big ones were, well, my – the second marathon, I qualified for Boston. So I ran Boston in 1990. Um, yeah. I was 20, late 20s. Yeah. And then my, and I ran Chicago. Those are the only two big, well known. I've never run New York, isn't it a shame? Um, Even though it's just down the road. New York is just down the road. I always get automatic entry. Um, it's just, it's a tough court. It used to, in the old days, it was a real hassle to run it. I know people yeah. stood online to get in it. You just have to, you'd have to wait on Staten Island for. Yep. You wait a few hours. In the cold <laughs> and there were no wave starts and you had to figure out how to get there. And so yeah. and by the time I was ready to do it, um, it was just way too expensive and too crowded for me. I don't yeah. like, yeah. I don't like, I do not enjoy running with, Thousands and thousands of people. Right. And Boston, <laughs> and Boston, when you ran, it was just literally a gun, no chip times, midday, Patriots Day, and off you go. Patriots Day, noon start, everyone was corralled in with ropes. Um, it took yeah. me seven minutes to cross the starting line. <laughs> <laughs> so none of these waves or anything, it was just gun. No, home. that was, yep, and that was 1990. Wow. Uh, my first uh, marathon was Marine Corps, and... Yeah. I got talked into it with very little training to go down. I signed up uh, the day before at the expo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that That's what 19, we'd love to do. That, yeah, 1980, Which, 1988. Yeah. So, long time Which ago. Leads, that's an absolutely brilliant pricey of your career, Suzanne. And as I say, we're going to get you on for a detailed, full-on interview and all the details on how we can help. Sure. But that leads sure. me segue nicely to Lawrence where I bet you would have loved when you're at New York City Marathon as a spectator, I bet you would have loved to just sign at the expo and say, can I run New York tomorrow? 
<laughs> so your your running experience, Lawrence, a way, a way to you. So people have a, a quick pricey summary because it's, it's quite different to Suzanne's, isn't it? It is very different. Yeah, I, I uh, was one of those kids that never, uh, never really clicked with sport at school. So, um, you know, doing other things like photography or whatever instead, um, obviously tried uh, quite a lot of hockey and that that was about it. I never yeah. really, I never That's really took field it. hockey for Americans watching. It's you're talking field hockey, not ice hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. field hockey on grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, but other than that, I was not just not interested. Um, and then um, when I was in my twenty five twenties, a bit of gym work and uh, running on the machine, but I, I never really thought of running in isolation. It was just yeah, it, that was just one exercise in the you know in the sequence of things in the program yeah yeah um and then uh, a few years passed by um <laughs> and I, all i was doing was commuting on a bicycle so that's the only, only real exercise that i got and at uh, 54 i decided to have a go at running so a little bit later than suzanne <laughs> yeah so i have a bit i have a bit of catching up to do <laughs> um <laughs> But what happened is that, uh, Donato, you, you decided to run New York. And I think, yeah. really, until that point, I, I, I'd taken a... Bye, uh, Joe. Sorry, my son's just... Uh, <laughs> just he, he can join in, he can join in, but he's got to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's running a little bit now. So that's Excellent, nice. excellent. Um, but anyway, so you were... To cut a long story short, you ran the marathon in New York, and uh, that's the first time I was really paid interest... No, that's not true. That's the first time I took an intense interest in what you were doing. I'd taken a polite interest in your marathons. And I thought it was a little, <laughs> all a little bit eccentric and crazy. Um, and then I thought, well, watching the marathon in New York, that's going to be fantastic. And it's an opportunity to go to New York. So, you know, amazing. Um, so we did that. And I, I ran around a little bit just to, just to sort of, um, well, partly so I could run around with a camera. Yeah. And, and keep up with you on the, on the course. Um, and and after uh, in the in the process of, of doing that, I found that, uh, and I'm I, like most people do, it it improved really quickly. I, I was not expecting that. I just thought I thought yeah. what happened if you started running is you you became a bit fit, and then you sort of you can run a bit. But what actually happens is you just get better and better and better. Yeah, I, I, the more you do it, and I didn't yeah. I didn't know I didn't knew, I knew nothing about running. Um, and then just one thing led to another. I joined a club, uh, started doing part run. Which is fantastic and looking forward to that coming back in may i think yeah yeah um and uh, then progressed to a 10k um nearly died but it was wonderful <laughs> that's and, the one uh, i paced you at wasn't it sub 50 yeah minutes. that's right yeah 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 <laughs> and you 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 you, 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 really, in you were really naughty you took me around <laughs> the, the first 5k faster than i'd run a 5k before yeah yeah so and I couldn't believe how fast it was going, but uh, yeah, yeah. that's that was the when I learned that it's fifty uh, percent of mine, at least fifty percent of mine yeah. game. Yeah, uh, and then following on from that, uh, some halves, mm -hmm. learned lots and lots of advice at the club, um, and very late into doing a marathon. You remember I was quite reluctant to do one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I like the ten k, I like the half. You did submit in the end. Eventually, I gave in because I couldn't really think of reason not to do one. Because I thought, well, uh, I'm I'm being told by everyone that I can do one, so I thought, oh well, not everyone can do a marathon, so let's give it a go. And you did, and, uh, got it and done. that was it. Yeah, I got it done. And after that, oh, I ran a, a quickish 10k after that, but then, uh, then it was a, after that was the beginning of 2020, and it all went downhill from there, didn't it? Um, <laughs> we had COVID. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I got and I got sciatica, <laughs> so it wasn't great, was it? <laughs> no, no. But you're back now. But I'm you're back. The sciatica yeah, back. and yeah. uh, yep, ran eight eight miles in the sunshine today and yeah, loved it. Yeah, yeah. We'll touch on it. I noticed Suzanne's lost a link in uh, New York, but we'll bring her back on if she can reconnect. So thank you for that, Lawrence. It's as you say, quite a different career to uh, Suzanne. But I'll now bring on Neil. If you want to give us a quick summary of yourself, Neil, I'm sure it's very different to Lawrence's as well, and maybe similar to Suzanne's, but, you know, a little bit of a brief career for yourself. Okay. Uh, at the very beginning. Welcome back, Suzanne, by no, the way. Sorry about that. That <laughs> was nine years That's old. Right. Uh, nine. Okay. Sorry about that. 
had to get in the car. Well, no, that's okay. I, that's start, okay. I started to run. I, I started to run uh, the start of the summer holidays from school when my judo club bent down. <laughs> so my dad said, <laughs> you know, you're not doing nothing the whole of August. So his friend from work uh, ran for a great club called East Hull Harriers. And that yeah. was my first club as a junior cult. Because in them days, it was cult. You them yeah. cults, yeah. You, uh, boys and youths in that order. So right. that was my start of running. Uh, and our team became quite good in, in, in a, a, a lot of big championship events and things. And yeah. then at 16, I joined the military. Uh, I, I, I ran quite a lot there the very early days. But then I got poached to be a cross-country skier. And it was just so different and so much nicer than running. That's what yeah. I did, really. And yeah. uh, I, I took up running again in about in 94 after I broke my back. Uh, and mm. I raced quite well for a few years, got some really good times, sub 50, mm -hmm. uh, uh, low 14, 5Ks, sub 30, 10Ks. Yeah, and then my back played up again, so I gave it up again and, and got in, you know, got into other things. And then in 2016, January the second, I was uh, uh, thrown a challenge to do a park run by a friend of mine. Yeah. And uh, so the next day we did the challenge. It was second of January 2016. I was uh -huh. 113 kilos in weight, and I did the Rygate park run in 35 minutes and. Wow. I nearly died, and, I, and and my son had just started to run, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get back into running. Uh, and after six months, I got the competitive head on, and it just went from there really. And wow. I was gonna, I was hitting low sixteen five k times after eighteen months, and I think I got a bit too enthusiastic and trained a bit too hard, and then had a few years of lots of problems uh yeah and then really got back on form last year re really going for the sub 16 5k and then covid came so i just right. uh you know as you all what can you do apart from train and yeah and try yeah. and keep mentally healthy as well right right uh, and then at that point i thought i was going to be a good 5k runner for my age and then out the blue i did a 1500 meters last september in 424 with no specific training. Uh, and then, so this winter, I've just just focused purely on 15 and 5Ks, basically. So yeah, I, yeah. I'm just eager to race now. I just want to get yeah, get yeah. on the track and get on the 5K roads. Yeah, But that's my brief history, really. Yeah, that's, pre that's pretty amazing. And, mm. and it brings us on to the topics. You know, Lawrence saying he had sciatica, you, you injured your back. And I know, Suzanne, we wanted to talk, you know, between... The three, four of us. How obviously, as we get into our latter years, our body starts to. Um, how can we say? We we start getting a bit old, don't we? We're not as quick as we were in our youth. But Neil, that that improvement, you know, it, bearing in mind you're in your uh, mid fifties, going from uh, or early fifties, going from a thirty-seven minute, thirty-five minute park run to a sub sixteen 35. minute. Yeah, to a sub sixteen minute. Not yet. It, Yes. Or get in, get in there. It just goes to show that when you have that ability, as you found as well, Lawrence, is you quickly, your fitness, if you do the right training, quickly catches up. But have you got any tips, things of how, because we're talking about keeping things holistically, because it's not just about the training. It's mm. about the recovery. It's about the nutrition. But how and how do you look at in terms of re risk, injury reduction and um, keeping ourselves going keeping the body going what things do you tend to do Suzanne to keep yourself ticking over as we say with that you know keeping the injuries at bay I was just showing what does it say all right the uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, uh, hello yes the effing hat okay <laughs> right um what do I do I just keep going. Uh, I think you find what you like, um, and then you, you just go with it, and you find what works yeah. for you. 
Um, I, I am a vegetarian. I'm a lacto ovo vegetarian. I don't um, want to give up cheese and yogurt. And I like some eggs sometimes. So I'm not a vegan, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, pretty, I eat pretty healthy, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd rather have an apple than a cookie. I know yeah. that's a crime in some <laughs> in some states, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I just love running. Uh, running made uh, since a little kid, so yeah. it makes me feel alive and connected to my surroundings. Yeah, yeah. and so you, uh, then then I got the competitive little bit of the competitive, mostly kind of like Neil, like with yourself, you get competitive to see how, how good you can do. And yeah. then in competition with others, they make you a better runner. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but as far as um, training, I learned a lot through my years of running, how to, tr mm -hmm. uh, how to really train and um, listen to your body. That's the main thing. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I did learn through many injuries over the years that your structure you can get your back injury your anaerobic system you get fit faster anaerobically yeah than your structures do so okay. your tissues lag behind so they don't get their strength back and then you you think oh I, I'm running so great you know I feel great and then you go out and you push it, but your ligaments and your tendons and your muscles and yeah, your bones yeah. aren't ready for that yet, for that stress yeah, yet. Yeah. So yeah. you have to learn how to be yep. patient. And it's uh, that's the hardest lesson I've learned in all of my 40 plus years of running. Yeah. See, and I, I, still to I still struggle with it. I go into, yeah. you'll get a little, as we say, a niggle. Or mm -hmm. you guys say a niggle, right? Yeah, yeah. You say twinge or twang here. Um, and you get a little thing and you can run through some things, say you have a big race coming up or something. Um, and, um, you go into a little denial about it. You know, you've kind of yeah. try to try to say that's not happening and this is not happening and you can get yourself into some trouble, some deeper water yeah. Yeah. and then set yourself back even further. Yeah. No. So basically, listen to your body and be patient. This is where I needed a segue from take that, a, a little bit of patience. But anyway, that's. Uh, but I keep hearing patience. Would, would you concur with that, Neil? You know, I know you mentioned, you know, having the back injury, or whatever, but <coughs> when you had done your 18 months and you went super quick up to, is it that were things happening to your body that things needed to catch up? What, what tips would you give in terms well, of? reducing yeah. the risk of injuries and keeping yourself ticking over by the way gary Pides, i see the question now i'll bring that question in with the guys once we've gone through this little point but yeah sorry neil continue yeah no i think everyone's case is individual um and yeah. first of all i think it was tipped on by by susan there you know you've got to know what kind of a responsive athlete you are yeah. to you know, are you uh, an athlete that struggles with your aerobic development or, you yeah. know, are you an athlete that struggles with your structure, your ligaments, your, your tendons, your bones, your hips, mm -hmm. your joints and everything else? You know, are you an yeah. athlete that struggles with just muscle fatigue, you know? And yeah. when you can identify what kind of athlete you are, then it really helps you to address your own recovery programs. Yeah. Uh, and, and I just, uh, being an elite athlete, 15, 18 years before I started again, and then just stopping and doing nothing and starting again, it's like when you see your friend's child after, say, five years, you say, oh, hasn't he or she grown so much? The parents don't realize it because they see the, the child every day. But yeah. from being away from the sport and coming straight back into it again, mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? You know, this isn't the same body that I left with 18 years ago. <laughs> and it was completely different. And that's it. It's, it's, you know, and it's I, strange I, but I, true, isn't it, guys? Yeah. No, it's, it's so true, you know. And, and I joke with 
a lot of people I help out in coaching and things, you know, at our age, things start to drop off, you know, and, you know, you stick them on again and, you know, and, and you've just got to circumnavigate how yeah. your body is. And, and what I found was, do you know what, you know, I'm not going to get to where I want to be uh, as a, let's say, born again athlete or, or old age pensioner in denial, whichever you want to call it, but it's all yeah, quite yeah, similar, yeah, is, yeah. is I need to get a pathway here, you know, I need to work out what's going to work. So I set myself certain challenges and, and I'm old school running, I'm heel strike. And I knew yeah. if I'm going to survive <laughs> to where strike. I want to be in a few years time, yeah, you know, yeah. I need to go more forefoot. So immediately yeah. when I started to train again, I, I spent three years to learn how to change in your foot, yeah. foot strike. Yeah. Yeah. But also supported by extra strength work, plyometrics and drills, uh, right. you know, and I set myself phases, but what I think what happened to me was aerobically and muscle memory came back quite quick. So yeah. I could push a race and get some really quick times only after 18 months back in training. However, mm -hmm. the structure, was saying, wait, wait, hold on, you know, this isn't working. You know? yeah. And I was getting a lot of kickback, mm. you know, mm. and everything yep. you read, what and this is one key point that I want to, yep, and one key point that I, I have to stress here for all, you know, masters runners, 99% of the stuff that we read on Google or, or on the internet, yeah, and all the surveys and studies and trials and training programs, it's nearly all based on athletes in their elite years, in their peak yeah. age groups, 25, yeah. 35, yep. There's not that much out there for proper studies on masters. So, you know, you. one of my points on tonight's chat was, was to get it right, you've got to learn one yourself, what kind yeah. of an athlete you are, how you respond to hard training and recovery, mm -hmm. but you've also got to be able to offset everything you read, uh, your training programs, you know, is the run you're doing 10K, you know, for example, you know, if you're going to do a 10K and you read you've got to run your, your 10K tempo run a minute slower than your 5K race pace, okay? That's pretty quick, yep. Yeah, but yeah. that's even quicker if that 10K you're running, yep, has quite a lot of elevation involved. So mm -hmm. what yeah. you're going to do there to try and keep pace of what we the article's telling you, you're going to be, you're going to end up running, you know, an average over the 10 yeah. kilometer tempo run or 5k tempo run, mm -hmm. an average mm -hmm. of 15 to 25 beats per minute above your tempo threshold run pace, you know? So yeah. everything we have to do is really, you know, uh, <coughs> just read more into it and what you, you know, yeah. Yeah. that you are old, uh, you know, and then any kind of elevation offsets, you know, uh, you know, you can ask me with anyone you want because it, yeah, it's worth yeah. knowing because it, yeah. I think it's a key thing to me getting where I am after five years, you know, yeah, of trying yeah. to get back to losing weight and getting, getting yeah, back in again yeah, and, and everything yeah. else. And admittedly, I still have challenges and we all do. You know, yeah, we are yeah. never going to uh, be elites as we were before. And the point yeah. that also Susan made is about, you know, digging in and everything else, but one of my things is is if I feel a niggle in a race or training, stop straight away. I don't yeah, care about yeah. pride no more, being the hero to finish a race. If it's because yeah. we can't afford a hamstring tear at our age. A hamstring tear, we won't come back from that. I, I can guarantee you. You know, so you've oh, got to really them. preempt. <laughs> uh, Susanna's you know? come back. back from a hamstring, yeah. I've come back from hamstring tendon tear. Oof. Now, Suzanne, yeah. you're a tough Great. cookie. You're a tough cookie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's not easy, though. You don't but want to get to that. Yeah. Was the at what degree? Yeah, yeah. It at was, what degree? Because uh, if you actually severe, rip a hamstring. Was, I had oh. four tears, moderate to severe, and proximal hamstring tendon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. At 50, yeah. I was 54. I think, it was, I think it was almost four years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I got, the thing is, you, I ran on it all. Do you still struggle with that? But it's people chronic. do need to. Be, it's yeah, chronic. people do. To, yeah. Yep, it's chronic. Once you do it, it's there. It's never goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Nope. It never heals. Scar, no. tissue, scar tissue never heals normally. I mean, it, scar yeah. tissue never goes away. You can yeah. try to remodel it so that it functions. It You can remodel it so that it functions. Um, but if you, I, all, every season when I start to push too much, especially sprinting it and says, up hello. It says, hey, I'm still here. I'm remember? here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> hello. still here. Hello, remember I'm me? the hamstring. Remember, yeah. remember when you were a dumbass and you ran, yeah, you yeah. tore me and you kept <laughs> running on me the whole season? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you tore me back in May in a half marathon and I, yeah. you kept running on me until December? That's, that's what happens. Br brilliant points you both made, mm -hmm. Suzanne and Neil. And there's a comment yeah. coming here from uh, Paul, agreeing with yourself, Suzanne, that uh, patience is not a strong point with many runners. And as no. you've, as you've hundred percent <laughs> said, Neil is, I'm of the same thing. So I didn't pay Neil to say this. Obviously, he's much more experienced than uh, I am or Suzanne is. <laughs> For me, pain means stop. Stop. Niggle means stop. And in fact, you may re recall mm. that. Yeah. I think Suzanne, you picked it up when I did. Not Brett, not Brett snapped me hamstring or anything, but I was hampered by my hamstring. But yeah. I felt it and then immediately slowed down. You might recall, Lawrence, I was in Victoria Park and I was doing a long run, pushing it, and I could feel it, but I immediately slowed down. And yes, it hurt and it hadn't fully recovered, but I'm fine now. So, you know, three, four months on. But if I'd pushed, thinking I've got to get this training done. I think it would. What would have happened is what Niels has just described, and then yeah, but um, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so Lawrence, you know, say, obviously having come back. For all sorry, Suzanne, here. go on. Can I say? Oh, I, I just wanted to say about ham. I'm an expert on high hamstring tendonitis. Um, they call it proximal. I missed to the so. What, Suzanne, the connection's uh, not not too good in the car there. <laughs> Can you uh, the the joys of live? I think you're frozen now. So whilst... I think we've lost her at the moment. Yeah. Oh, she's still I there. Am? Yeah. Oh yes, you are there, Suzanne. But it keeps oh, um, bleeping in and out because of the. Uh, yeah. You might have to might step be, outside. Might be because of the Finish your point. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so. So you can mistake some injuries for others. And I thought that my hamstring was a piriformis, which is muscle. Hmm. Not any better, but uh, I mean, it's always, it's literally a pain in the ass. But so um, one of the things about <laughs> piriformis is, is stretching. And I, and you do yeah. not stretch a hamstring tear. <laughs> so I yeah. made the mistake of making it worse no. by stretching. So, um, no, yeah. hamstrings, if you have any kind of injury, you just, just really, yeah. re really get a good diagnosis and f don't fool around with it. Find out right away what it is and yeah, don't try to self-diagnose when mm. Dr. Google or anything like that. Go and see a professional. Yeah, exactly. Would, would you guys yeah. agree? So I was going to jump to Lawrence, <laughs> sciatica. It stopped. Well, reading it, but you're back now. I was, <laughs> did you like I that was, pun? You're back. Yeah, uh, very good. Ba <laughs> yes, I was totally polaxed by sciatica. I had it so bad, I was hospitalised uh, just for just for a few hours. But I, just I was, for fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't I was fun at all. Was it? Oh man! Uh, because I couldn't move, um, yeah. so uh, the, the paramedics had to come and take me to hospital. And I had some very nice drugs and felt much much better really quickly. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so they just give you the uh, pain drugs, which you know. Again, yeah. I think. Whilst yeah. I'll, I'll let you finish your point, Lawrence. Is I, I've heard people take painkillers and paracetamols and ibuprofen before certain races to null ah. the pain. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't think I need Neil and Suzanne to give their input. Don't touch any drugs that stops pain. Your body says, pain, stop. So uh, unless you're an Olympic athlete and you're going for that 100 meter and it's that one off, um, but even then we've seen what happened with Usain Bolt in his last race. Both 100 and 200 meters, he pulled up injured. So um, yeah, sorry, Lawrence. Yeah. So I was, yeah, I was, I, I, yes, you could you could uh, someone who is perhaps uh, a, a little bit um, uh, I don't know. Uh, obsessed <laughs> could could have used I, I i've still got a supply of the painkillers that i had at the time 
um i must take them back actually um i don't had i kept them for a while just in case but um yeah you could use them to to brute force a run because they literally i mean they it, this is the powerful this is strong stuff this is, uh, yeah you know yeah um um sort of hallucinogenics potentially um but uh i um i bless i bless my luck when it comes to running because i am a patient stubborn coward uh, <laughs> which i think is it really helps to reduce the risk of injury so basically um, if neil I, was neil being a coach you'd be the perfect student so you do everything you're told Lawrence. yeah i am slightly autistic and i will do exactly as i'm told so and your patient I, as well yeah if, exactly yeah so yourself linda my colleague at work who's a, uh, an outstanding athlete um, and my coaches at the running club uh, would tell me what to do and i just literally did exactly as i was told yeah I would. I never go go off script. I never force the pace ever. But on the other hand, you you guys have been talking about run how you feel. I think that cuts both ways. Uh, and I can give a, a specific example of that with the part run. Um, I was running uh, around about twenty one and a half. I think my PB was at the time um, twenty one thirty five. And uh, everyone had said, you know, run how you feel. And I think meaning don't overdo it. But <laughs> uh, on that part, run, th th there was a part run and I, I thought, I feel amazing. I feel at, like I can fly. And I thought, sod it, I'm just going to go for it. And I, I did a 21-25. I took 50 seconds off my part run, uh, which you, you guys know is a lot. At, yeah, at yeah. That, that's huge. You know, mm. it's, a, it's a lot in one go, yeah. And I was actually shocked. I was shocked by the amount of time I cut, but also shocked by how you can run. How when you feel great, you can run really fast. Or yeah. fast for me, it was fast for me. It wasn't. It's not fast, fast, obviously, compared to yeah, stuff yeah, Neil's yeah. doing. Yeah. Um, but it, at the time, it was fast for me. Um, and uh, yeah, so run how you feel. Run quick if you feel good, as well as holding back if you don't. Um, yeah. The other thing yeah. uh, for I would say for knees, my. Um, I can comment on this because my son is a podiatrist and my other son had uh, is has recovered from uh, a form of arthritis. So we've thought about knees a lot. And uh, the two things I would say is that, uh, this is a benefit of people tuning in because you guys understand this anyway, is that regular uh, running uh, where you don't overtrain, you build up the muscles around your knee, um, you strengthen your joints, and it's, yeah. it, 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 you know, people think, oh, no, running, you know, it's high impact. You're going to ruin your knees. Well, yeah, if you're, if you're overweight and you, and you overtrain, you will, you will. But if you build it really slowly and you're patient and you keep your weight at a good level um, and, and strengthen, you, you know, your leg muscles and particularly your knee muscles, then uh, you, you shouldn't, you, sh you shouldn't yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, injure your knees. Um, and the other thing I would say is uh, I, I run on, um, you know, in woods uh, if I can. On, on grass I, yeah. there's not much opportunity in i don't like running in the mud so there's not much opportunity in the winter but from mm. spring till october um yeah. where, wherever i've lived uh, you you're able to run on grass and i i do that as much mm. as possible mm. To, mm. to to reduce the shock on the knees yeah, yeah. um oh yeah, and the other thing that go on, go on. yeah i was saying the other thing that really played. helped me out yeah with part run i um i got to the point where i was uh uh, eventually uh, sort of vying with the guys the best in age category but, yeah. but so, and and so I, I find I found that setting realistic objectives helped so when I first of all I I mean my first part runs 30 30 days it was uh, and I and I nearly threw up it was awful um, but uh, <laughs> like most people <laughs> Still quicker than Neil uh, you know but, but yeah but it, it but it picked up and um yeah. Yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> I'll be so, expecting you 16 minutes soon, Lawrence. Come on. <laughs> well, well, as you know, Donato, I was heading for sub 21, but um, yeah. th things got in the way last year, didn't they? Yeah, well, um, I'll come and chase you in May, mate. Go on. Anyway, sorry, so, go on. But anyway, just chasing down the V60s, chasing down the V55s, and, and, and uh, before it all went badly wrong last year, I was chasing down the V45s. So yeah. it, you know, it, it, but it because they're not that much faster than me, so it was something yeah. you can aspire to. 
Um, and I, I think that's the, to me that's what works for me is to have something I can see it from here kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not a ludicrous objective. It's something which you could yeah. feasibly yeah. do, and that that works for me. Absolutely, I have to concur. There is science that has proven, and I had some knee injuries and so. In fact, coming up to New York Marathon, I injured the knee. It was the IT band insertion. It was all dreadful stuff. But when I went for scans. The physio says, wow, look at your knees. They're amazing. I went, are they? And they'd strengthened over the years. Yeah. So whilst yeah. I was 56 at the time, 57, um, they'd gone stronger. So I totally agree with what you're saying. I'm sure we could dig out. I'm sure Neil's got some science. When we do the interview, Neil, we'll work out the details. That it has proven, as Lawrence has said, if you, know, if you maintain in the weight and train sensibly, it does work. Which leads me on to question to all three of you, and you can answer in any particular order, Gary is asking, so Gary is 62, and uh, he says, at 62, can I dream of another marathon? He's already done 11, but that was 10 years ago. So he says endurance improves with age. Um, I don't know, who, who wants to go first? You know, whether you want to give a simple yes, or you can give a nice detailed answer, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. You know, can Gary do another marathon at age 62, not having done a marathon in 10 years? Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Neil? Without doubt. It it all depends on the in, the intensity that he wants yeah, to run. Yeah. Yeah. And Did, speed. Go on, Neil. I can hear you going to start. Yep. Yeah. No. Hello, Neil. If everything is working, oh. absolutely. Uh, it, yeah. At six. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're on. Can you hear? Oh, he's gone. <laughs> yes. The joys of uh, technology. Yeah, We're doing musical gremlins. chairs here. It's, well, it's great. It's I great. Can isn't say, it? I can tell you from um, people in my club, there's tons of tons of sixty plus marathon there. Mar yeah, people yeah. doing this marathon at sixty plus. Yeah. And seventy, yeah. believe yeah, it or not. Yeah. And some eighties. Hey this Neil, you're back. Yeah, I'm yeah. back. <laughs> Uh, Calvin in my club, East London Runners. They, Calvin's a V60, and uh, he he can run uh, he can run a three thirty, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I it's, think you were uh, going to but, say Neil. Yeah, no, I'll say a sixty two. If everything's working still and it's not dropped off yet, absolutely. However, at that age, you know, I mean, it's so much older than we are here on this call. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would just bring in a bit more strength work. Uh, you know, like the knee thing from previous uh, a few yeah, minutes ago. Yeah. Mo most knee problems are because of insufficient quads. Basically, the quads yeah, are the protectors yeah. of the knees. Yes. However, f for the sixty-two-year-old or our age, it should be full core and leg training. And a yeah. lot of people, uh, if I choose uh, twenty top elite British five K runners tomorrow, and we do a quad hamstring test including myself we will all fail and what i mean by that is is let's for ease of numbers you know your hamstring should be should be two-thirds the strength of your quads so let's say if you can do f maximum five leg curls at six mm -hmm. at 90 kilos you should be able to do the same on your belly with your hamstring curls doing 60 kilos and most athletes will fail that, even yeah, myself, yeah. you know, you yeah. know, but, you know, two thirds. And, but you need to, if you can take time away, if you can take, say, 10% away from your mileage and put that into the gym, yeah, and it's proven, you know, at our age, you know, use it or you lose it. And that is with speed, yeah, with yeah. strength and everything else. So if you can put that time and forget about miles, 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 and just take a little percentage off, stick it in the gym, yep. Yeah, One, yeah. you will probably run a PB at 62 mm -hmm. in relation to your master's years, not when you were 25, obviously. Uh, yeah. and, and you will probably come out of the marathon with less aches and pains and probably no injuries, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. You know, but yes, of course, you know, 62 isn't that old. Um, and when yeah. you think of Tommy Hughes, uh, just turned 60 last year, uh, he ran uh, a world record in 232, I think, 220, 231, 232. Yeah, 
yeah. bless his cotton socks, right. you know. Amaze, amazing, amazing achievements, you know. I'll have however, to catch up with Tom, him. Yeah, however, Tommy is quality and he has a history of being quality, uh, but, you know, it doesn't come easy. You, you have to work hard. Yeah. But yes, yeah, yeah. 62 years old, marathon. I mean, I'm not going to even attempt a marathon until another four years because mm. I think I've still got speed in me. I want to use that speed. When I yeah. think I'm losing that speed, then I'm going to jump to half marathons and marathons, probably at about yeah. 59 years yeah. old is my yeah. goal. Yeah. So, so yeah. Gary, Gary has come in and uh, with some other comments. I'll go through both of them, Gary. So, uh, so he says he was never fast, a PB of 3.42. I think 3.42 for 10 years ago when you're in your 50s, Gary, is incredibly fast. Mm. And I think as, as both um, Neil, Lawrence, Susanna have been saying is, if you do the right train, I'm guessing, Gary, you've still continued running. You've just not gone up to marathon distance in the 10 years. And as he said here, um, Gary's then said, thanks, guys. It looks He's going to go for the Loch Ness Marathon. So, you know, you, you're obviously like challenging yourself, Gary. You're going for one of the toughest marathons. And Loch Ness is not <laughs> an flat. easy one. Yeah, it's not flat at all, is it? <laughs> oh, it's... It's, no, but the uh, scenery is the scenery is beautiful. So yeah, yeah. So you know, I've got that to take your mind off the you know the pain. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you, you, I'm guessing you're going to build up to that, uh, Gary. So yeah, thank you guys for that uh, comment. But we've touched on the things that uh, in terms of coming back and so on. But what what keeps you guys, especially yourself, Neil and Suzanne? You've been going, you know, whether it be from single digit or for yourself Suzanne from age 12 and only from age nine how do you keep the spice how do you keep the interest of running because there'll be guys here on online watching and some on replay and if you are watching live don't forget those thumbs up and whatever and comments is what what keeps you going what motivates because I know you're both very competitive is it the competitiveness that keeps your mojos going or is it just something intrinsically in you that you just love it and you just do it for the love? Suzanne, do you want to go first? Probably probably, probably both of those things. Yeah. Um, I think uh, for me, uh, I just wanted to get better through my – kind of my 20s, I just kind of jerked around. <laughs> and then I had, a goal, I had a goal of breaking 40 in the – but the 10k before I turned 40. Yeah. So I did that in thir when I was 39. I I started breaking 40. Then I had the goal of going under 19 in the 5k because mm -hmm. I've never I had never done that. Um, and I started doing that. And um, so they were time kind of time goals that I had yeah. for a while. Yeah. And so I became a very good 40s runner. I was, in my 40s, I was a, you know, ranked around here, uh, local, yeah. and uh, national. Mm -hmm. And then I got a little burnout, and I started trail racing. Completely Plus. different. Completely mm -hmm. different. Um, and I loved it. And I did that for. I still road raced a little bit, but I focused more on trail racing. Yeah. Um. And then I got into, well, all runners were social. I think most runners are social because at races you meet people and you talk to people. So a lot of my friends are running friends and stuff like that. And then I got into the, like we call it the club scene, running mm -hmm. for competitively for a team. Yeah, yeah. And that just re completely reinvented me. Yeah. And that is my drive now, mostly, well, COVID kind of screwed things up, but um i passionately love running for teams I, I run my best when i know the team is counting on me to yeah, yeah. Run, run, run a fast time or place you know um yeah. and um usatf new jersey even though i'm in new york i'm only a mile from new jersey they have a great uh grand prix series they have cross country and i love it um yeah. so that kind of stoked my passion and then along came, I'm going to say in my late 40s, 50s, I'm going to say 50s when I turned 50, age grading, age graded performance. <laughs> and that was another goal to get, um, 
you know, I was in the 80, low 80s, and then I got it started creeping up as you get older. But the tables change every five years. Mm. <laughs> so I had always had a goal of getting 90%. Yeah. And I started hitting 90% um, two years ago at 50. Wow. I'm 57. I'll be 58. So I first hit it, uh, I think I was 55. I hit mm -hmm. one, but it was in the mile. Yeah. Not a lot of people run the, the road mile. So yeah. um, then um, I'm going to say not last year, not 2020, 2019. Mm -hmm. I had the goal of getting 90% in every distance that I ran. Yeah. And I did that. So it's having goals. A a big shout yeah. out, obviously, to your athletic club, which is Shore Athletic Club. You want to sure show the uh, yep. mm -hmm. Shore AC, show the gear. You say about running with the team, one of your team members mm -hmm. is Roberta Groner, who's yes. going for the age category world record, no less, after she she's had elite three babies. Masters, elite Masters. Um, yeah. She qualified for Olympics. She ran Rotterdam 2000, I'm going to say. Uh I think it's 17, wasn't it? 18? 2018 or 19. Yeah. Wait, 19 yeah. was... It is recent. It is a recent one. I'm going to say February, they did run the trial. So I'm going to say it was April of 2019. No. Yeah, uh, yeah 19. She ran Rotterdam, her PR, uh, 229. Wow. Yeah. That's she's not bad amazing, for a... Amazingly fast. For a master's in the... Uh, I think she's in the female... 40, category 40, 40 to 45. 40, 40 to 44. Yeah, 40, 40 to 44. 44. Yeah. She's 40. She, I think she's 42 or 43 now. Yeah. So my take from what you're saying, Suzanne, is having goals, realistic goals, being right. part For of yourself. a team, being part yep. of a team yep. helps that and the social. So some great sound bites there, Suzanne. Neil, yep. would you, have you say the same things or would you add to that? What, what keeps you motivated you know, you've been running over 40 years, nearly 50 years now. I know you had a bit of a break, but um, and you're a born-again runner now, but you're back at the top of your game, you know, knocking on the door for world records. What keeps you motivated? I think much the same as Susan, really. Uh, and, you know, that really does motivate me. Uh, and I think, I think if you've got that competitiveness in you, you have it when you're 12, you have it when you're 55, yeah, you know, yeah. it's there, you know, uh, and I do like team events, but, you know, I've just joined last year Vets AC, which is the South of England Vets Club, uh, yeah. like you have to be for British Masters. So I'm really looking forward to team events with them this year, actually, uh, because my, my actual club doesn't always field a Vets team. Uh, they used to be fantastic in Vets races, but they kind of, dropped off because people leave and move away type thing. So team yeah. events, I really do like. Uh, however, the last few years, I, I've had none really. So I'm looking forward to that. But I would think currently my biggest motivation to get me back in was, was to be honest, is I, I was so heavy, overweight and unfit. I want to be here for my kids in 10, 15, 20 years time. Uh, yeah. And that was probably my number one motivation. And now, and now on from that, my number one motivation is my son, who's yeah. still 13. Uh, he'll be 14 uh, in, a f in, in, a, in a few months, uh, who runs national anyway, standard in yeah. the UK. But all of a sudden, the last three weeks, I mean, I'm the best form I've been on uh, since I was a youngster. Uh, and <laughs> since three weeks ago, he's just started smashing me from everything, from 200 meters. <laughs> Honestly, 200 meter reps to 5k tempo runs, he, he, he's kicking me off the field. So, yeah. uh, however, I've just come back off, I've just finished a 20 week really high mileage winter. So, I'm just coming back down to getting speed again. So, my motivation is, is to not let him beat me for another year. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you want know? to keep up but, with your son? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think so. Uh, I it's a matter of time, really, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I mean, uh, I think Susan knows this, you know, when you're on the track and, and you think you're powering down, the, you think you're powerful, running down the back straight, and all of a sudden, a 13-year-old just jogs past you. 
<laughs> you know, you, you know, but they don't look like they're trying. You know, but they are. But yeah. you oh, know, yeah. it's annoying. They have such a different biomechanical, you know, you know, uh, technique than we have. You know, and yeah, yeah. and the energy return is is so much more efficient. You know, so yeah, same as Susan, really, with a few other things where I don't want my little boy to beat me just yet. You know, yeah, and yeah. it is a it, it's a kind of family thing, if you know what I mean. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. But I, but I hate to admit this because I think I've already lost. Basically, I think I'm not going to beat him. I might beat him at five k, just maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he's going to go sixteen thirty easy in his first five k race when <laughs> when we get back racing. Yeah, uh, and uh, no. we did mention. But if I can, mm, go on. I was going to say, be, being in Royal Town, and uh, I don't know whether Paul Coughlin's still on today. I ran round the uh, the uh, road relay route and it's very tough undulating route but your son won the gold medal in the youth team last year uh, or two years ago i think neil was that they, right they won the team the they team won, won the gold the, medal yeah they won national cross country they won national cross country twice golds and that was mansfield and leeds yeah and and in birmingham which was the is birmingham the, the the road small thing yeah park. road relay Sutton yeah, Park yeah. yeah Sutton Park they got silver on the photo finish oof right photo yes. finish yeah so, and there was a big argument on who actually won that because because if you can remember the finish line on the ground was yeah, a this... meter before the tape so mm. we won on the tape but the other team won on the finish line. So we brought a take right. there, so it, it, it uh, was a lot of controversy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you oh, know, it's, it's, what what <laughs> what's it like? It's so competitive. So it is. It would, is. Yeah. Would you believe, guys? We've already been talking for an hour, so I wanted to finish off with regards to food and eat. But before I ask you those questions, I wanted to do a quick little because I'm feeling very. I'm feeling glad Yeah, I'm feeling glad all over, and I know Suzanne likes this. And you know, we, we don't we don't want to forget that it is Saturday, and he is a bit of the enemy for those who do like the enemy. <laughs> Just an excuse to throw some music in there. So, what we'd like to finish on is because a lot of people keep asking about um, diets foods what we should do and this and that and uh, and i know that uh, neil and suzanne have have views and also yourself lawrence but just a generic thing you know um i'm not going to give my views because well, at the end of the day I'd, I'd like you as the uh, the guests to tell people what you think of um should people be following a diet should they be eating certain foods should they just, you know, being a veteran, should we just enjoy life or whatever? So I'll let you <laughs> kick things off, Neil. So we'll go round, oh, as I point, so we'll go round the house. So it'll be Neil, then Lawrence, then Suzanne. Food. So we're going to finish on food. What do you what do you have to say, mm -hmm. Neil, in terms of what should people of our age or, you know, 35s and overs or longevity yeah. of running? Um, and there's the clue is longevity. So whatever you do, you need to be able to keep doing what what would you mm -hmm. say, Neil, if people are watching, I mean, listening? Yeah, I'm a big believer in in you get your food right. You're halfway there, really. It's, you know, it, it's a big thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, it depends on what distance you're doing. You know, yeah. but, but if you're yeah. training good hours and good mileage, yeah, never don't diet. You know, it's the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, I yeah. call it food management, basically. Yes. Uh, and and you've got to cram down the carbohydrates. You know, if you're not getting that. You're not getting a glycine in your muscles and you're going nowhere basically. So yeah. you need to make sure you're getting the right carbs, the complex carbs, you know. Uh, yes, a bit of sugar, chocolate and things. It's not so bad for you, but if you're going to take it, take it straight after a hard session, which is simple carbohydrates, and then do your yeah. complex stuff afterwards, you know, but within, yeah. you know, half hour to 45 minutes. But mm -hmm. one of the key things, and this is, uh, I mean, I do a lot of my, uh, uh, research on the Scandinavians because I was taught in Scandinavia 
for my skin and my sport, and I did a lot of sign <laughs> sport there as well. When yeah, I was younger. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they are quite advanced in this kind of area. And and there's the few of the only countries. There's lots of stuff out there for carbo loading and everything else, but not on protein loading. And and what I tend to 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 go for is adaptive protein eating as well. So mm. protein's key. As you get older, you know, you don't recover so quick. So you need to give it a bit of a top up, you know. Uh, mm. And after any hard session, I won't go down the quick sugar route. I will go down really a tin of sardines, which is about 26 to 28 grams of protein, which is the optimum amount you, you should take in at one time anyway. So sardines yeah. are a great form of protein, yeah, or even or, or whey mackerel, protein, but I don't, any you know, of the tin fish, yeah, any tin no. fish. A mackerel's good, but sardines are very good because you've got a lot of additional uh, oils and, and uh, okay. omegas in there okay. as well. And, yes. and also, if you're going to have sardines, eat the ones with the bones because the bones have a lot of the, the, uh, the cell regeneration qualities in them as well, which is very good for you. But protein, you know. Um, eat the bones. If I'm really fatigued. Did you say eat the well, bones, no, Neil? Sardine. Yes, but sardines are very small bones. And they're fermented oh, okay. in the fish anyway, so they're not. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, they're quite nice to eat. Yeah, gotcha, but, but gotcha, protein's yeah. key. Protein. So basically, adaptive eating. So, for example, if I wake up tomorrow morning and I've got a recovery day, yeah. So it's not high mileage. I'm only doing say 45 minute recovery, easy run. I will have a post egg breakfast with maybe a bit of toast, a bit of orange, and a bit of fruit. Uh, if I've got a, however, tomorrow I've got a trial run in the morning, so I'll wake up tomorrow. And I will have porridge and a banana, <laughs> big bowl of porridge. And a, so yeah. I'm cramming, you know, the carbs in there for that long run, you know, three yeah. hours before, you know. Yeah. But as soon as I finish the long run, I will down a protein, a 28 gram protein intake of some sort. And then yeah. I will follow that while I'm stretching with a carb intake as well. So I'm replenishing the, you know, the glycogen as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that, you know, Diet's a bad word for us, you know, because, yeah. you, know, you know, it can cause lots of problems. A lot of people that are feeling heavy or, or no energy or anything else, you know, take away, take away your hydration and your diet because it's probably because you're not getting enough carbs. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and you, you're probably not even getting enough regeneration from your protein or not taking mm. protein to get, the, to, to get your regeneration. So it's quite key. Yeah. And also passive protein is very good as well. So at night time, you know, ha have a small protein snack before you go to bed. So that means yeah. that protein is going to be utilized by your body while you're sleeping on repairing things. Mm. Mm. But if you take protein middle of the day and you're active for the rest of the day, that protein is going to go to your brain, your heart and lungs everywhere. So yeah. passive protein is a very good way of getting a little bit extra protein in your system. And while you're sleeping, that protein is going to be more utilized on repair. Wow. wow. Fantastic. At, at our age, it's recovery. That is brilliant. Uh, brilliant tips, Henry. I think you, there's people taking all this on. Uh, Paul's come in, obviously mentioning we we're talking about Sutton uh, course. Yeah, it is a tough course, but we love it. Um, Lawrence, food, <laughs> and I'm glad you said, Neil, diet. Diet is a bad, bad word. We don't need to diet. Mm. Lawrence, from your perspective and your level of performance, do, do you watch what you yeah. eat, or do you, are you just happy what you eat? And um, well, I'm, I'm very fortunate in that my, my wife and son are both uh, very good cooks, and so we eat scratch cook food all week. Which yeah. is nice, and mm. uh, and um, it's a vegetarian more or less Monday to Thursday. Yeah. Um, Friday fish, Saturday and Sunday normally meat, but tonight we had fish. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, but nothing really, uh, not not nothing like the level of scrutiny that uh, Neil's applying. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But I'd, I I'd you know picked up some interesting tips there. Um, and I, I will, I will look more into this because, I, as as you know, Donato, I was getting to the point where I was getting diminishing returns. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I hit the barrier at twenty one minutes. Um, I'd run just just over twenty one on a five k several times and wasn't getting any quicker. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I probably do need to pay more attention to diet. Yeah. But yeah. basically, I just eat, eat sensibly. Um, 
yeah fruit plenty of fruit do i do have a drink now and again so um i had uh -huh. a small beer mm -hmm. small beer today i had a, a can of guinness yesterday probably have a glass of whiskey tomorrow but nothing you know all in moderation and i don't i don't drink monday to thursday normally because um i uh, that's um advice medical advice to sort of have have a break uh, with alcohol I, I have you know have at least half a week of break every week um, and some weeks i don't drink any alcohol at all yeah um uh but yeah re really just sort of an, like a, more like an average joe kind of diet but um sensible not no i don't eat any fast food don't you know don't eat any junk food um yeah just sort of so keeping oh, it all uh, nice and balanced yeah and and uh, but do i do i mean like when we did the marathon and when i do a half um do all the carb loading and and do do pay attention to my close attention to my diet for a couple yeah. of weeks before the race that that's why i do sort of really yeah. you know uh, i'm very careful then but and the night uh, before you were quite adamant it had to be no no meat in it vegetarian type you know yes correct yes on race morning having meat in your body that's not processed is not a good idea it's interesting no. that which it, it will segue nicely into Susanna. but you know you were talking lance about vegetarian you know no, no meat until weekend suzanne what would you say about eating do you have anything to add from what neil and lawrence have said well i would charge, say charge my just battery for just for sorry, i'm going to charge my battery sorry <laughs> yeah you carry on neil you carry on <laughs> um i think uh for anybody in general for health purposes um and as we talked about longevity uh as you get older um you do need certain more nutrients um we lose our elasticity and stuff like that but um big on aging is antioxidants everybody knows that cell damage so uh, i drink a lot of tea uh i drink mostly black tea, tea but i, I drink yeah. elixir of life uh i do uh drink some green tea uh yeah. but i love my black tea because i like strong yeah. um uh as far as general diet i i do a lot of raw raw fruits and raw, vegetables. raw foods yeah um steamed vegetables um uh i love my greek yogurt if you guys have that over there yeah, the thick, yep. the thick yogurt uh, has a lot of protein and calcium. So mm -hmm. for women, fifty-five older, you start to lose your bone minerals, and you run into osteopenia, osteoporosis, which is really bad for an athlete. Um, so you get bone fractures, stress fractures, mm -hmm. really easily. So um, I'm careful about taking. I do take some supplement for that, but um, I do yeah. eat dairy and the green leafy vegetable for calcium and just, you know, stuff that tastes good. I like oats over, I do have some, I will have wheat breads and things like that, whole grain breads, but I love oats as far as a grain, um, has good protein and good old so tofu. You can make tofu taste like anything. <laughs> yeah. Tofu on toast. That's uh, brilliant, guys. Brilliant. Pasta. Was, pasta. Yeah. Pasta. You can make every, anything with pasta. Absolutely. Throw anything in there. Make pasta taste good with a um, herb spices. Um, I love Indian and Thai food. Mm -hmm. So they know how to. They're masters of spice. You know, yeah. curries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just love it. Yeah. So Excellent. that kind of thing. And um, Neil is absolutely correct about protein. Um, after my runs, after every run, I learned this, uh, you know, I'm going to call it my youth. I'm going to say my thirties through maybe even my early forties. Um, I didn't eat anything after I ran, you know, hardly anything no? until I got home. Yeah. Like maybe water, maybe yeah. a banana. Now I have, um, it's a natural protein bar. There's just egg white in it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I forgot to mention the protein shakes after every run. <laughs> sorry. You're back, Suzanne. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I have the gloves on because it's so cold, it slid right out of my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's called a raw, raw bar, a raw RX. Yeah. It's dates, uh -huh. cashew yeah. nuts, almonds, 
egg white and the flavor, whatever flavor is natural, like blueberry or chocolate yeah, or yeah. it's all natural. There's no crap in it. Sea salt. Yeah. And it's got um, 12 grams of protein. So sometimes I will take uh, one and a half. Yeah. So I'll try to get close to 20 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. That's or, brilliant. I'll have, like, or I'll have the famous chocolate milk, you know, or milk, just milk. But um, yeah. the bars are easy to carry around. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I've got to say. Big on hydration. Big on hydration. Water, water, water. Tea, tea, tea. Keep, water. keep the liquids up. Yep, 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 yep. Got to keep Absolutely. hydrated. Yeah. I've got to say, guys, just one I think thing we on, could on diet. Go on, Neil. Well, go on, Neil. Just one thing on diet, there, guys, <laughs> is 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 one thing that I call the 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 god vitamin is vitamin D. I take. Yes. I don't believe in supplements yep. in any way, unless you're a female and you need iron for certain, you know, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, however, vitamin D. I mean, so yep. if you can't get your vitamins from from food and veg from fruit and veg, then you're not eating correctly. However, vitamin D, you can't get enough what's required. Vitamin D is crucial. And it, it, uh, it only costs £2.50 for, for 45 days worth, which is what, $4 for, for yes. you know, for the two months. So it's a very cheap vitamin, uh, but it makes a huge difference. And I'm never ill. Uh, and I can guarantee mm. if I stop taking vitamin D in the winter, after four weeks, I will have a sniffle. Guarantee it. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's because you need you need sun exposure for D. So it's yeah. sun it's yeah, sun yeah, exposure. Sun, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I was going to say. Then so, you get you know, sun cancer with sun exposure. <laughs> so in terms of supplement, <laughs> yes. add the vitamin D during the winter months, or whatever, which which it makes which is absolutely all, brilliant. All I've own. got. All I've got own. to say, yeah. guys. Yeah, I've got to say, guys, it's been absolutely fantastic. We we've. We've, we could talk for probably another two or three hours, and I can see that. Uh, and no. I'm going to do, as I mentioned, <laughs> we're, we're going to do separate one-to-one um, -one interviews where we can go into detail with Neil and Suzanne and Lawrence in terms of their experiences. Mm -hmm. But I've got to give a big thank you to each of you guys for coming mm -hmm. on live. And it's wonderful having it live and sharing this, and we can have all the technical glitches going on, but we're all still here <laughs> at the end. We, we've Some have disconnected and reconnected, but it just goes to mm -hmm. show that we're all determined to make this work, and it did work. And you've all shared some amazing insights and information, and I'm eternally grateful. I'm sure everybody who's on still is grateful. And uh, I know that Gary, Paul, Steve, Ian, all those who've been commenting, it's been absolutely brilliant. I've got to thank you guys so much. Don't log off or anything. Don't want to, so when I say bye-bye, stay on the line. Don't disappear because I'm just going to end the broadcast. But what I want to say to everyone who's been watching, so firstly, a big thank you to my guests, Neil, Lawrence, and Suzanne for coming on. A big thank you to all you guys. I'm very grateful you were watching as well and have watched to the very end or watching on replay. It's been absolutely brilliant. I've loved it. I'll do a few little quick outros because obviously you've got to do an outro, haven't you? <laughs> So, yes, here in Royal Town, Neil in south of London, Lawrence on the English Riviera, and none other than Suzanne in Greenwood Lake, New York. Thank you all. Good night, and we'll see you Come next on. week. Wherever I am in the world and wherever you guys are in the world, I'm sure we'll reconnect. So thanks to everybody. I'm going to end the broadcast now, and I'll quickly chat to you guys backstage. Cheers, so thank you all. Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye-bye.